I'm thinking maybe we should talk first about how we got interested individually in civil disobedience, uh, and maybe that will be a good introduction. Okay. First heard about what was taking place in New Hampshire when I was in uh, living in Washington D.C. I was running an organization called Bureaucrat, and Pete uh, was living in D.C. at the time, and we would watch videos uh, taking place in Key, New Hampshire. We're like, these are more of our kind of people than uh, you know the, the Beltway types, and so now we're here. Liberty Forum marks my two-year anniversary uh, living in the Shire. I, like you, Tally, I saw the videos uh, that were being produced, and these are pretty early. Uh, we're talking about 2005, 2006, and the earliest movers uh, to the, the Keene area were Russell Canning and Cat Canning, uh, as well as Lauren Canario. And I thought, these people, you know, I want to be there to video record this. I want to be there to talk about it on my, my radio show, and I want to promote what these people are doing because I think it's really impre impressive activism that I've never seen happening anywhere else. It kind of came from the DC Think Tank world and you know I, it was a good experience. I learned a lot there. I definitely um, got a solid foundation but I wanted to actually not just philosophize about these ideas and be a, you know, I, I wanted to implement them so that's kind of why we took to the road initially and why I landed in Keene, New Hampshire. Why civil disobedience? I would advocate more civil resistance than civil disobedience. The reason I think that nonviolent resistance is a good idea is I think good people disobey bad laws, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, live a good uh, agorist life. Uh, you know, uh, the agorism I consider having the consciousness of a libertarian and living that. When you're living free, and the aggressors come along, and they attempt to hurt you or your friends, and you stand up. I feel like. There's a diso that is disobedience, but it's also more non-cooperation. I, I feel like civil disobedience is something that is planned, that it is something that you promote. And I don't think there's anything wrong with those let's announce in advance we're going to break a law tactic. Again, to me it seems like more reactionary. Like I don't want to engage, like the purpose of civil disobedience is to get a certain injustice in front of more eyes and then in front of more minds to hopefully bring about a change. If you choose to allocate your time to civil disobedience, that means you're choosing to try to like think about how this other group of people that you believe doesn't have legitimacy is going to react to you. To me, instead of allocating your scarce resources there, why not create and build? I think one of the most important factors is numbers. Uh, the more you can have on your side of civil disobedience and non-cooperation, the better, the safer uh, it's going to be. What audience are you are you are you acting for or performing for? Anytime you do something that challenges the status quo, there's going to be a negative reaction. I see what you're saying about it being a performance, although I don't like to think of it like that. Um, however, I do think about when there's cameras around or I'm behind my camera that people are going to watch this video and uh, I would like to be seen as the good guy in this video and I would like for the, uh, the person who I'm talking to, if they're being antagonistic or aggressive, I'd like for them to be seen as the bad guy. Although with their badge and their authority, a lot of people don't see it that way. It's, it's good to be proactive and strategize and think like, who's the potential audience and then like figure out how you can have the biggest impact with the, with the least amount of risk and uh, while staying true to your principles. You know, well if you don't like the law, change it. Isn't, isn't that the ultimate goal? Is okay, so uh, the most recent example of civil disobedience that, uh, that I was involved with was uh, not standing for a judge fast enough. So how am I going to change that law? There's it's a way slow process. Corrupt, corrupt judges. It hasn't been done. If the goal is to quit being harassed by these by people who think they have the right to dictate your life, then why try to work within a system that they create and that they legislate and interpret and judge? They're never going to They're never going to agree to their own abolition to stop taking your money and and telling you how you can and can't act. So I mean, I think the surest way to do it is just to live it. You know, I think what you're touching on uh, is a common critique of civil disobedience. And it's certainly not right for everybody, um, but on the other hand, I think it's, it's still a very important uh, thing to do because it does draw attention to issues. How important is governing yourself when it comes to civil disobedience? And I'd say it's instrumental because we each have our own, you know, there's, morality is not objective. We each have our own what we think is right and wrong, and we all have our own lines. We all know what we might be willing to say no to or you know, stand up for our beliefs in different circumstances, whether it's against somebody who has a badge who's trying to shake you down and take your money, or whether it's against someone, it's just some random folks on the street who are trying to take your money. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you're, you know, you own yourself and you're responsible for your actions. So, you know, um, that should be your guiding life for everything in life, including activism. You know, do you have a, 
a statewide issue that might pull in more people who talked about members before. The, the best group civil disobedience that I've seen is the 420 uh, celebrations, which when they were happening in Keene, they have happened in Concord, by the way, and there's going to be another one coming up in Concord on uh, April 20th. So those have been very successful, but I'd love to, to hear any other suggestions that, that people have for something else that could unite different areas <coughs> of, uh, of the state. You know, I, I think it's important just to strike the root and come down to like self-ownership because like the marijuana thing is great because you have the right to consume whatever. It stems from a core issue of self-ownership, so why not just focus on the self-ownership aspect and like, you know, say these, you know, just live free and any regulation or constraints someone tries to put on you, you know, any third party that you don't consent to is, is a legitimate. Yep, all these issues tied yeah, to one this. issue. Mm -hmm. you could just speak a little bit about, uh, you know, you, you guys facing your own fears uh, in the face of people that are willing to uh, use force against you. Well, for me, it was, uh, I, I was caged for three days because I had a camera the size of my thumb and a courthouse. And um, I had never been through um, a New Hampshire uh, jail situation like that. So um, for me, I was, um, I knew I was going to get arrested at some point, and I wanted to see what, pe what New Hampshire does to people, what New Hampshire does to peaceful people in many circumstances when they bring them through the process. So I... Because of that, um, I wasn't really, it sounds weird to say, I wasn't really down the experience. It was a learning experience for me. Approaching the non-cooperation civil disobedience does require putting as much fear aside as you can. And so there are ways to mitigate some of that fear right up, right up front. Move to New Hampshire, get around other like-minded people because when you've got that support network, it's a lot more, you know, the fear isn't as much of an issue. There's a quick, like, fear is a mind killer and I think if we continue to be led by fear, the bad folks, the people who think it's okay to use violence against peaceful people, whether unthinkingly or they just think they're doing their job, is only going to continue to get worse. So if we're scared today and we don't do anything, it's going to be even more difficult tomorrow. I think ending on the fear topic is a good one, too. Uh, to Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Marcus. Yeah. No fear. Uh, we got a song, by the way. Sure. Uh, whether it's civil disobedience or it's non-cooperation, whether it's planned or whether it's in the moment, <clears throat> the ultimate... You know, it's the ultimate test of your, your uh, resolve, I guess you could say.